Hi, this is Jana and welcome to my kitchen. Today it's all about Sunday dinner. And so I'm gonna show you what I've made for many, many years. It's a, I call it a Pepsi pot roast. That's what I've called it forever. And I am spraying my roasting pan. If you don't have a roasting pan, you can use like a nine by 13 pan or bigger, or you know, an aluminum pan or something. But you would you want to be able to seal it either with a lid or with heavy duty foil or you know some sort of a lid. So anyway, I just sprayed these in my roasting pan. When I was a young cook, just learning and starting out in life, I my mom always made pot roast on Sundays, a lot of Sundays, and I wanted to emulate her. Well, I could not make a pot roast to save myself. I tried browning it, I tried everything I knew to do. <coughs> And by the way, this is a large Sam's Club pot roast, uh, chuck roast, and it is six pounds. So accordingly, in the recipe below, I'm going to you know, reduce the amount. Most people aren't gonna make this big of a roast. This costs $30 just for the meat. Don't go, whoa, I can't afford that. Do you know how many meals three of us are gonna get out of this? <laughs> There's gonna be probably at least six meals at least. And so that's going to bring it down to like five dollars per meal for three people which is you know a dollar something a piece so you can't even go to mcdonald's for that and this is delicious so this makes the best gravy for mashed potatoes and gravy or roast beef gravy whatever you want so that's why i'm going to share share it with you today so for every um two pounds of roast, this is what you're going to do. Put in one can of cream of mushroom soup. So since I have a six pound roast, I'm going to put in three cans of cream of mushroom soup. You don't have to brown this roast. As a matter of fact, this one is frozen solid. You can do it frozen. You can do it thawed. It just takes longer if it's frozen to bake, to roast. So I'm going to add three of these cans. And sometimes I'll even put a little bit of the soup underneath the roast but you don't need to do that. I'm not gonna do it today. It is super, super fast. This is, I did it as my kids were growing up. We did this a lot for Sunday dinner because um, we lived away from our church and so I'd put it in the oven. It was perfect timing. We'd come home and the house would smell so good. <laughs> then all I had to do, I always had my potatoes peeled and so all I had to do was turn the potatoes on. They cooked about 30 minutes and that gave me enough time to set my table and get my um, potatoes mashed, all that, and the, make the gravy, and it was time to eat. Okay, how fast was that? Get all of that goodness. And then for every um, roast, you'll put in two pound roast, you'll put in an envelope of cream, or of cream, <laughs> of dry onion soup mix. Just regular dry onion soup mix. And I'm telling you this, you won't even have to do anything to this gravy, but I'm gonna show you how I expand the gravy. And I'm just gonna put in, whoops, two of those today. And then for every can of cream of mushroom soup, you add one can of Coke or Pepsi or Dr. Pepper, some cola. And so what you're gonna do, allergies here, so my husband's got allergies today, so he's kind of coughing. Um, do not use sugar-free, no zero calorie aspartame or any other um, artificial sweetener, erythritol. Do not use it. You do not wanna heat those ingredients, so use the full sugar Coke, and so I'm gonna add three cans of Coke, because we like extra gravy, because we use it for so many meals, and I can turn this exact recipe into pot roast dinner. I can make barbecue beef sandwiches with it. I can make um, beef stroganoff with it. There's so many things I can do, just starting with this very meal right here. Now I'm gonna do, this is where you're going to put either a tight foil on your pan or a domed lid that's gonna hold the moisture in. And I'm gonna put it in the oven. Since my roast is 
froze it, I'm gonna start it out at 375 degrees for about an hour and a half, and then I'm gonna reduce it to 350. And now for every pound that you're gonna do, it's not gonna take so long. But this is gonna take about three and a half to four hours because it's frozen. But it will take you about three hours um, if it's thawed. So just allow for that time. So it's about the right time to get up on a Sunday morning, put this in the oven. You can also do this in a crock pot, but don't put all that Coke in. You might just wanna put a half a can of Coke if you're gonna do it in a crock pot. So I'm gonna stick this in the oven now, and then I'm gonna go get on with the rest of my day and things I have to do. And we will come back and I'm gonna show you what it looks like, how to tell that it's done, and how to make the gravy. And we'll see you in a little bit. Okay, it has been about three hours and 50 minutes since I put this frozen six pound roast in the oven and I started it out at 375 uh, for the first two and a half hours and then I turned the oven down to 350. So we're gonna just, this is gonna be our first check. I haven't checked it yet. And so we're gonna see where we're at on it and check the tenderness. And so here is showing the tenderness of it. I do believe that this is done. And so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, leave the lid on it. I don't know if, Erin, can you zoom in to show the gravy already how it is? Um, just a beautiful, beautiful, you know, thick gravy with that recipe. And I haven't done anything to it. And so um, I'm gonna get set up here and then I'm gonna show you how to uh, multiply the gravy if you choose to. Okay, we're gonna, while we're making our gravy and letting our meat rest, I'm just gonna show you about 30 minutes before you're ready to serve your meal. If you wanna do some roast carrots, my mom always used to do pressure cooker carrots, which are my absolute favorite because it really does cook them fast and it leaves all of the nutrients in it. But the next best thing to pressure cooking is roasting your vegetables. And so I just peeled some carrots and you don't even have to peel them, especially if they're you know pretty fresh. And then I just put a little salt and pepper on them. And then I'm gonna go ahead and stick them right in my oven at 400 degrees and we'll be back in just a few minutes and show you how to do the gravy. Okay, I've got my gravy on the stove here. I just took the meat out of it, set the meat and covered it so that the meat will stay warm. And then off to the side here, I just have to pull a pickle jar. Um, use any jar or a um, smoothie shaker, you know, whatever you've got. And then into that, I've got some ice cubes. You don't need very many. It's just to help break up the flour clumps. And then I've got about a cup or so of water. And then for every cup of water, you're going to add about a quarter to a third cup of flour. I like to use Wonder Flour because it just makes a really smooth gravy. And I know some of you are gonna say, my grandma always, or my mama always used cornstarch to thicken her gravy. And you absolutely can use cornstarch, but instead of ice water, you use warm water or hot water to dissolve your cornstarch. The reason I like to use flour in my gravy is because when I reheat my gravy, it doesn't get watery. And I think that the cornstarch makes it a little bit watery. Okay, if you note, know, on the side of my pan is some dark brown from making the roast, and it's probably a combination of everything that I had in there. But I'm going to go through and I'm going to scrape up all of the side of the pan. Sorry about the noise here, but that's just part of it. Huh? Yes, Aaron just said it. That's all where all the yummy goodness is. Mix that. And it puts a really pretty color onto your gravy, too. And you get all of that off of there. Because everything about gravy is about flavor. And that roasted meat with the fat from the pepper. And so I'm going to keep going up there. And as it steams away here, I'm going to keep going up and doing that. So I'm going to shake this one more time because that flour separates out pretty quick. And it's okay if the ice cubes go in there. I'm going to turn my fire up just a little bit now so that you can see the bubbles, tiny bubbles. 
and I'm going to add in about half of that. So that's probably about three quarters of a cup that I just put in for this size of a roast. Now remember, if you made a smaller roast with less, you're going to need less. Keep going up there and getting that goodness off of there. I'm being noisy, aren't I? And when you stir, I'm going clockwise when I stir. And when you add flour or cornstarch to a sauce, gravy, making a pudding, it's always good to stir the same way. And so that flour or cornstarch has been worked into your liquid. But this is the only way that I ever found that I could make a good gravy. And I had said I'd made it over 20 years, but I was thinking after I said that, my daughter is going to be 32 this summer, and I know I've made it at least 31 years or longer um, that I've made this roast. And it's the only roast that everybody I know who's never been able to make pot roast or has never tried to make pot roast, everybody can succeed with this recipe. And like I said, you don't even have to multiply the gravy. If your family's not a big gravy eater, but what if you've got somebody like my husband who slathers it on every piece of meat, all his potatoes, on his carrots. He's going to use more gravy. And Lord knows I want some for myself. So I always multiply the gravy. Now, we're going to bring this to a boil. I'm going to add just a pinch. Because remember, we use that um, onion soup and then the Campbell's... Um, mushroom soup and both of those already have salt in them but I didn't add much because I don't want it to be salty and then and plus I'm going to salt my potatoes and I always to my mashed potatoes and to my gravy I always add even though that coke that's in there has sugar in it you will never know this is not sweet you would never in a million years know that this had coca-cola in it I promise you not in a million years you would never go oh that's a sweet gravy nope this just tastes like the best roast beef gravy you have ever had. And it's going to start to boil here. And it's starting to clear. See, it was kind of cloudy at first with that flour water. But now it's starting and you don't see any fat. If you see fat, then you need to add a little bit more of this uh, flour water mixture. If you see, you know, the fat separating out, that just means you need a little bit more flour water. And then that will absorb in, you know, any excess fat. And so I'm just going to be back in just a few minutes. I'm going to keep scraping the sides of this to get my gravy good. And we'll be back. And I'm going to mash my potatoes and we'll be time to eat. Okay, I just wanted you to see the gravy after it's cooked for just a few minutes. See how clear it's, you know, come. With a, you don't see any flour anymore. Because you've got to boil it long enough so that the flour cooks. Okay? But you don't have to use Wonder Flour. You can use all-purpose flour. All right, now we're going to switch around here. I'm going to drain the potatoes that are on the stove there cooking. And we are going to make a separate video on how to do my mashed potatoes. Because I have a lot of people ask me about how I make my mashed potatoes. So that will be in a separate video. So look on my page for that. Guess what time it is. It is time for roast beef with potatoes, roasted carrots, gravy on all of it. And so here is that roast beef, and it has been sitting while I was doing the uh, video. It is perfectly tender, ready to go. And that's what happens when you rest it. If you would um, slice it as soon as it comes out of the oven, then it's not going to um, be quite ready, you know. So you just want to let meat rest at least, you know, 8 to 10 minutes. And the bigger the cut, it's fine. And so you have to kind of watch with these chuck roasts because the direction of them changes of cutting against the grain. And so I'm gonna get my husband's plate ready here. He's gonna be eternally grateful. I'm sure he is hungry. That's always part of it when you can smell that. This is one of the most aromatic roasts as it's cooking. It's absolutely delicious. I know that he's going to, oopsie, <laughs> just smeared the side of the plate. I know that he's going to want at least that much. That's probably a good five, six ounces maybe. And then I'm going to put on a roasted carrot. He likes those. 
tips got a little bit brown because they had to, they're smaller than the bigger ends, and so that's going to happen. But they don't taste burned, they just taste roasted. And now the most important part are the mashed potatoes, whipped potatoes, whatever your family calls them. And now I'm going to add the dollop, <laughs> I say that jokingly, of gravy right into the center of the plate. And I know that he's going to want a little bit of gravy over on there. I'm going to clean my plate up. And this is Jana's Pepsi Pot Roast with potatoes, homemade gravy, and delicious roasted carrots. Thank you for stopping by Jana's Kitchen. Please remember to hit the thumbs up because that really helps reach other people with my recipes. Hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe, and please stop back to Jana's Kitchen.